Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, sorry for the weird angle. I don't have the best tripod. I literally have like this like little short desk tripod and so I have it stacked up on <laughs> a bunch of boxes um, just to get it to the height so you guys can see me. Um, but unfortunately, you can't really see the table. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, kind of just film this portion and then I'm gonna take it down a notch so that you guys can actually see the table when I'm talking. So um, today we're gonna be, I'm gonna be telling you guys how I do my intention setting candles. Um, when I do intention candles, they are basically for the purpose of protection, manifesting something that I want, um, just setting the intention for the tone or the vibration of a room or the vibration of a particular thing. Um, it's, I mean, it, it could, <laughs> honestly, you can do a candle for just about anything. <laughs> um, but my particular candles that I am doing, um, for the next few weeks into like literally for the next six months, um, are the intentions of protection and just strength and wisdom and courage and a whole lot of love. <laughs> so um, you can do your candles for any specific intention that you want. I always say that when you guys are setting intentions for candles that you think about yourself, you think about the intention that you are wanting to set, but you're not necessarily doing it for any harm onto others. Um, I'm not big on that. I think that when we do harm onto others, or we try to, um, you know, when you're trying to send bad vibes to someone else, you are technically messing with the law of attraction. And a lot of times, if you don't know what you're doing, you can invite that back to you. So be very careful <laughs> with what kind of intentions you want to set. So for this video, for your intention candles, there are a few tools that you may, I recommend you may want. So one of them being, a candle. The particular candle that I'm using is um, a, one of those religious glass seven day candles. Um, so I'm using the Virgin Mary. Um, you can use any candle. You can use one of these. <laughs> um, you can use a tiny little tea light. You could use any kind of candle you want. But the ones that I'm particularly working with are the seven day candles and these are the religious ones. Um, I would say get yourself some some sage or palo santo for cleansing your candle prior to using it um some herbs some mixed herbs so i'm going to show you guys what i use so you can use like dried flower petals if you have a bouquet of, of flowers and maybe like you want to sprinkle some of the rose petals or the flower petals from your flower bouquet you can totally do that you can pick flowers from your own garden totally do that um but some herbs, at least that's the way I like to do it. So I'm just gonna show you guys the way I do it. <laughs> um, some cleansing spray, if you cannot light sage or incense or um, Palo Santo, then some sort of a cleansing mist, if you own any of that. Um, obviously a lighter to light your candle with. Um, a Sharpie. And I have some um, essential oils because you could also anoint your candle with some oils as well. And if you're into reading the cards, a tarot deck. <laughs> so those are the tools you guys are going to need. I'm going to go ahead and bring this camera down so that you guys could see me here on the table. There we go. So now that you guys could see the table, <laughs> um, let's talk about the tools. Let me get my scissors too. A lot of times the religious seven day candles, the wick is really, really, really long. So you may wanna get some scissors cause you're gonna wanna cut the wick, okay? Um, so prior to setting candle intentions, I feel like it's really important that you cleanse your candle ahead of time. When you buy it from a store, when you buy it from, you know, online, whatever, other people have handled your candle, okay? Um, 
you don't know what energies those people are messing with. You don't know what kind of vibe that shop was dealing with. <laughs> it's just always wise to cleanse something that you are going to be using as a sacred tool, okay? So to do that, um, I like to use sage. So, and it doesn't have to be this like a long drawn out thing. Just light it enough so that it starts to smoke. And all I like to do is just kind of wave it through the candle. And you can, you know, say a prayer out loud. Um, sometimes, you know, I just like, I ask that I banish all previous energies that don't resonate with the energies that I want to play with. And cleanse this candle. And there you go. And then you can... If you have a little abalone shell, you could put your sage out so it doesn't smoke up the house. You can do the same thing with Palo Santo, or you could light an incense stick, whatever the case. You don't have to do it for any amount of time or anything like that. You can simply, you know, do what feels best for you. If you don't have um, any sage or anything on you, you can also use a spraying mist. So this is banishing, negativity banishing spray that I use from time to time. So let's say you don't have the option of lighting something, you can also spray your candle. So you could do that too. Let me show you, so down in here, <laughs> I actually have, um, candles that I just finished. So I've been doing this for the last three weeks. Um, this is going to be a whole seven month process as this is something major for my husband. So not giving details because it's, you know, private, but, um, these are candles that have already been finished. So I'm saving each and every one of these candles. Don't know what I want to do with them yet. Um, but I can't see myself throwing them away when they have brought so much amazing energy towards this this journey <laughs> so I'm keeping them there <laughs> okay so once we've cleansed our candle the next thing that I like to do is um, trimming the wick so I recommend see this one is kind of sticking up way too much I recommend trimming it so you have not too small because then you don't want your flame to be prone to being put out because the wax over overcomes it, but don't want it too long either. So I kind of do it, maybe it's not really, you're not really gonna be able to see, <laughs> but it's better to trim the wick not too much the first time around in case you change your mind. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. It's a little long still, but the wax is actually kind of built up into the middle, so I don't want to risk it. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe I'll trim it just a little bit more. So once you've trimmed your wick, it's like stuck in there. <laughs> once you've trimmed your wick, um, then the next thing I like to do is um, right underneath, you could use a keyword if you're doing this for somebody. So like for me, I'm doing this for my husband. I've been writing his name and then the week number because like I said, this is gonna be a seven month thing. <laughs> and we're literally tracking this journey by the week. So um, with your Sharpie, and it's easy to, to do it on these seven day candles because it's glass. Um, with a Sharpie, I like to write the name. So I'm gonna write his name. And then I'm gonna write which week it is. So this is week four. Okay, so once you do that, for the sake of privacy, I'm not gonna show it off, but um, you write down, you could write down a keyword. But, so let's say you're setting an intention for protection. You could write protection. You could write your name on it. You could write someone else's name on it if this is something for them. You could put a symbol. You could put a number sequence, whatever you want. You could put whatever you want, it's your candle. <laughs> Um, and so 
That's what I like to do then because once you put the herbs in it, you don't want to put it upside down. You know what I mean? Oh, I just showed you guys. <laughs> once I put the herbs in it, you don't want to put it upside down. Um, so, you know, think in terms of like what's going to be easier for you, okay? Um, okay, so then the herbs that I like to use, and you can also put crystal chips too. If you have like little baby crystal chips that you don't mind um, putting in the candle, you can also do that too, but I don't have any. Um, so then I bought these herbs. This is by Moonlit Herbals, and I bought these on Etsy. And it's mixed herbs. So this one is... Um, this is for luck, fortune, divination. So they mean different things, but I mix them. So it's basically mixed herbs are dried flower petals, dried, um, just dried herbs. This one has more of a lighter. Ooh, they still smell good too. Um, this one has more lighter tones. This one has more of the rosy. I've been using more of the roses because it's Virgin Mary and she's, all known about the roses, so that's what I do. So what I do is I sprinkle some herb all into the candle. You could use as much as you want, but just know that um, the more you put at first, when you first light your candle, some of the herbs might light up. So if you smell um, like burning, <laughs> something burning, just be aware that that's what that is, but it eventually puts itself out because um, the, the wax overcomes everything and it'll put it out. So um, I dress the candle with the herbs, as you could see. And then once I do that, um, like I said, you could, you could also drop a couple essential oils in it. My husband loves the scent of lavender, so I'm just gonna put one or two drops of lavender in there for him. One, two. Just because he likes the scent. <laughs> and this is can this candle's for him anyway. Um, so then once I do that, then I like to hold the candle in my hands and I say a prayer, okay? So you could say a prayer silently to yourself. You can do it um, out loud, whatever you feel comfortable with. So I usually, you know, do it to myself um, and I recite it. I'm not going to do it for this video because it's personal. So I'm going to do that after the video, but um, that's what I do then. After you've done all of this, then you are literally ready to light your candle. Um, so once you've set the intention, once you've prayed over it, once you dressed it, cleansed it, everything is done then you're literally ready to light your candle. Now, be wise. Just because you have a candle lit doesn't mean you should keep it lit when you're not home. I am one of those people where I am comfortable with blowing out my candle and then relighting it. If I, I set the intention when I do my prayer where I state, literally I'll state, every single time this candle is lit, may the energies be you know reborn. Like it's basically resetting the energies that I put for the intention. Um, so some people, I know some people are very picky with that. Some people do not like to blow a candle out once they've put it on. I'm not one of those people, I'm comfortable with it and I've never found anything wrong with, with that, but go with what you feel comfortable with always. <laughs> so um, if you do choose to keep your candle lit, some tips I have is, um, what am I going to use? So, a couple things people have told me that they do. Some people will pour some water into a pot, you know, not that much, and they'll place the candle into the container. Um, obviously if this candle were to fall over, it may not go anywhere. So I feel like the depth of your container, make sure it's something that can be lit. Obviously pots are put over the flame. Um, but like I said, I don't recommend keeping your candle lit when you're not home. Just be safe. Um, 
Another thing you can do um, is put some water in your bathtub. So it's like really shallow, shallow water in the bathtub and you can place your candle into the bathtub so that if it does fall over, obviously the water is gonna put it out. You could do the same thing in your sink, okay? Just make sure there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing around that can catch fire. Um, I tend to leave the candle lit when I'm not home, once it's been maybe down here, literally. Like when it's around this level, I usually let it be by itself. Um, sometimes I don't even do that. It just depends on what my intuition is telling me. But if it's like down to here, if this candle were to flip over because of how tall it is, it's gonna burn itself out because of the wick being wet, I mean the, the wax. So, but when it's fresh and it's up here, sometimes this flame, depending on how tall your wick is, this flame can be so high how strong your intention is, your flame is gonna be super high, it just depends. Um, I have a video where I talk about, you know, reading your candles, reading your seven day candles, search for that one through my YouTube channel. But um, but yeah, you guys, it's, it's just use your own discernment and be smart about it, be safe. But this is how I use, this is what I do with my intention candles. This is what I've been doing and what I plan on doing. <laughs> for this next six month journey. Um, so if you guys have any questions, leave comments below, let me know. Um, I wish you all the best with your own candle intentions and I will talk to you guys later. Bye my loves.